Welcome back to Modern Homestead, Alaska. Today is Tuesday. It's Wyatt's first day of his junior year of high school, so I'm taking him to school. And then we'll get home and do the Every Bit Counts Challenge, see what we can't come up with. So, happy first day of school, Wyatt. I love you. Welcome to our vlog. We are the Milnes family. We started building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska in the summer of 2021. That's my husband, Aaron. I am Jessica, a stay-at-home wife and mom. Our second son, Caleb, lives here with us along with our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt. We brought our two dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and got a new addition, the Alaska dog, Roberto. Well, I thought I'd get you in here for a minute. Let's check the time. It's literally 5.30. I haven't started recording today. I'm folding laundry if you're wondering where I'm at and what I'm doing. My mom comes on Thursday. I'm super excited to see her. My sister Mary loves me so much. She was so excited about us building the house that she came in October last year. And she is literally here for us getting heat, right? And it was already pretty chilly, you know, for the most part. But she was excited to see Alaska and come and visit and all that. So she was the first member of my family to visit. And now my mom is on the way. And then, of course, Aaron's parents came this summer. So I, though, have done a bunch of stuff that, for me, I think is important towards the Every Bit Counts challenge outside. I have literally spent the last hour, hour and a half scrubbing with soapy bleach water all of our coolers because they smell like fish. Gross, gross, gross. Um, the Yeti we take everywhere. If you watch my videos when Cody and I are traveling to Alaska, like we fly our Yeti every where we go we take it on date night like you wouldn't believe that thing goes everywhere and it is stinking amazing and then we have a couple other coolers that had chicken and fish and I use them to thaw things out because we only have the one main refrigerator and then this new refrigerator is full of cheese of course so I got all of those scrubbed up and that is a ton of work I washed out my two gallon buckets that I had put in a bathtub with bleach just to sanitize them, get them completely ready. And then I did soap and water on them and they're drying. <clears throat> Let me see what else we can get into today. Okay, to get this video made, I'm just going to have to talk to you guys while I make dinner. Erin all day has been at that job that we talked about um, where the big ship goes and looks at the glacier and he is soaked to the bone, freezing. And so I'm going to make him one of his favorite quick dinners. I do a fermented sourdough. So it just hangs out, goes into a hot pan, 425 in the oven. 30 minutes covered, 15 uncovered, 45 minutes we'll have hot bread. In that amount of time, I can make a split pea soup. The reason I thought this was appropriate to share with you guys is if you watch my Azure orders, I buy a lot of split peas, lentils, all of those different things. And then with you guys, I made some ham bone stock. And so I'm gonna throw together a quick split pea soup, which is one of our favorite things. And believe it or not, even though we categorize maybe in our brains or our pantries, peas and lentils with beans, peas and lentils cook really, really quickly. So in less, two, maybe two hours or so, I can have a soup from the dry beans Whereas without using an instant pot or something like that, you could not have a bean type soup in two hours unless you've pre-canned them, use an instant pot, the whole nine yards. So just on the stove top in my old trusty Dutch oven, I'm gonna make a split pea soup. 
let me show you how I do it. I'm gonna write out this recipe in the description box so if you're interested in it. Keep in mind when you're watching it though, it's a little bit different than the card that I write out because I double the recipe so that we have something for lunches the next day. Not only that, instead of just using the two cups of split peas, what I would do is use maybe one cup of green split peas, half of a cup of yellow, and half of a cup of lentils, but you don't have to do that. You can use just straight green split peas. So I use two cups of split peas, one cup of yellow, one cup of lentils. The main um, thing that I think makes this soup is actually the dill, which sounds crazy, but you have got to try it. Okay, so here's what I have going on. I have all these buckets cleaned, starting to dry them. Then I'm going to scrub and clean the gamma seal lids. So they come, but they're also filthy. So I get everything scrubbed and clean. Then I'm gonna start doing some stuff in the pantry. And then the thing I'm gonna work on today is I brought this up from the basement. So this is additional spices and stuff that we didn't use in the spice video. And I am going to seal these um, with the food saver. Um, it's not a food saver, but the vacuum chamber in the other room so we can make sure and get all the air out of these. So I'm gonna head to my pantry and do that as well. We'll see if we can't get a few things at least packaged away so that they're staying good, nice and long until we need them. As I pull this hot bread out of the oven, I do want to mention if you go back a few videos, I do show you how I make this sourdough bread. Um, so you can check that out in the sourdough series and there's a playlist about sourdough. Anyway, yes, it is 6.50 at night. We do eat super late and the reason is, is we wait until everyone's home. Um, it's always been something we've done since the kids were in car seats and rear facing car seats and not even able to sit at the table. And so if that means we wait till nine, we wait till nine. So it is late, but I did make dinner in time for my family. Okay. So I have these and they're kind of sealed, but things can move around and there's two ways of doing it. You can either do it how I'm going to do it, or you can do it in mylar. So I cut just a little tip, just like that on it. And then I put it in this vacuum bag. And I just leave it in its original packaging because we're going to get all of the oxygen out without using an oxygen absorber because not everything likes oxygen absorbers. Get it in here. And we're gonna seal it up. And what my goal is, is then I'll label it I'll put the day and the month on it is when I refill refill the pantry so here's the ginger I think they sent me extra ginger on accident how I do my system is this ginger would then go it's ground mustard anyway in one of these and then these refill what's in the kitchen 
when they refill what's in the kitchen and we use the whole half gallon. I wash the half gallon jar and then I refill the half gallon jar. So you can see here that the garlic salt is low. It's not that I don't have more garlic salt to refill that. Look, I do. I have more to refill that. But because I'm always wanting to use the freshest of ingredients, I won't refill this garlic salt until it's completely gone, even though I will have some packaged and in the basement. Here, all of this is going to go to the basement. You can see what we've done. So it sucks all the air out. That dill weed is gonna last a really long time in there, but we refill these different jars with those things. So that is what I'm gonna work on this evening. There's a little rock. So I'm gonna add this to the pile. I have this entire bucket to do tonight. So let's get to it. While I'm finishing up, this is loud behind me, let me show you what I'm putting in the spreadsheet and how I'm keeping all of this organized for the future. Make a recommendation so you know what you have, even if it's out of sight, it's not out of mind, it's right there at the fingertips. It's a great idea to keep it organized someplace, even if you hand wrote this on a sheet of paper and kept that. Okay, I'm just gonna screen record. So this is my spreadsheet that's my pantry staples. You see a couple of things on it, what the staple is, the inventory needs, where to buy, average cost. What happened when we moved was I actually lost this and had to restart it. The color coding is just for me, I won't bother explaining all of that. But what I just did was make a very generic list and then I add to the list as we go. But we're dealing with spices, so I'll talk about this for a second. I keep track of what size, so whether I want a half gallon or a quart. This is a work in progress. The X's are things that I had and the N's are things that I needed. I then ordered all of it from Azure and I have not updated that this since but I am working on updating it now. So what I've done is go across here though in this E column and started putting how much extra of each one of these spices do I have. So when I am done with this month, I will be able to refer back to this list and see everything from my baking section, my spices, condiments, vinegars, you name it, and know exactly what I have either in my pantry or in our storage area. So get yourself a little list, know how much you want to have for the year. I know most people aren't going to be doing a half gallon, but maybe you do a quart and a pint, something like that. Um, and then keep a list of it. Don't just put things in your long-term storage and not know exactly how much, how long it's going to last, and what you have down there, and not having to dig through it. You know, I could go on all day. So this is my spreadsheet. Make your own, handwrite it, do it however you want, but try and get yourself really, really organized 
before winter comes and knowing exactly what you have in the pantry. I'm now gonna use this basket because I have so many spices up here. So I'll just use this laundry bucket to get it down. But everything that goes into the bucket has been labeled with a date, put into the spreadsheet by how much quantity I have. And then I will know exactly what is in storage in the basement um, that I can go and pull from. So let's just walk over here again. So let's say I ran out of time. I would know, do I need to order this from Azure or should I just go to my spreadsheet or do I have it in the tote? So uh, these are then going to go into a tote that is dark with a lid um, in order to kind of seal those up as well in the basement. And so hopefully the double duty on it will keep the spices fresh. So let me get all this loaded up and finish getting what I have. So the other day when I was working on the pantry, I went ahead and sealed these, labeled them. I have not put them in the spreadsheet and obviously I just put them here because they need to go in the basement and needed to be dealt with. So I partially dealt with them. I'm gonna deal with them fully. Because I put the ham in here frozen, I'm just gonna try and pull it out. Just put a little dice on it. That's just falling apart. You can obviously pre do all of this or do like really small chunks. My family doesn't mind. Mm. I want to give it a little taste test. Let it cool. I'm going to check the soup for salt and pepper. I don't need any. Because there's dill in it, I think that's like a nice topping if you have some fresh dill to do on the side. And I don't know why. I until I found this, I never would have put dill in it, but it literally needs it and it's so yummy. Let me get a bowl of this served up for Aaron, he's freezing, and get him some bread cup. In the event you are interested in how you cut one of these strange round loaves of sourdough that you see all over the place, just cut it in half, flip it onto the soft side and cut from the top and you will not be squishing the bread. It works perfectly. And then we just use some softened butter, but do let the bread cool for a while before you try and cut it. Oh my goodness, I went out to do night chores and I have to quit going out there without a bucket because my tomatoes, if I leave them on too long, they get bad spots on them. So I just been bringing them in and letting them ripe. And when they get like this, I freeze them and then we'll be able to make tomatoes. See, if they leave them too long, they're getting bad spots. So, 
I'll show you. Look how many I got. Just pockets. Just pockets of tomatoes. There's more. <laughs> okay, these got to ripen. Then we're going to eat them. Look how deformed that one is. Crazy. I'll be right there. Okay, so thank you those of you who've stuck around today. I had a super productive day. I didn't have a super productive recording day, but... Again, organizing the pantry, knowing what I have is super important. I'm really notorious and I'm going to show it to you. I'm gonna sh hang my shame, right? I'm really notorious for getting really good ideas, buying all the stuff and then not following through. And the best part of this challenge for me personally has been it is causing me to do something with the stuff. So I bring it into the house, like all those spices have been sitting there since I made the spice video months ago. It really wasn't that long ago, but long enough. But now with the challenge, I am organizing them. I'm making my spreadsheet. I'm following through. I'm knowing what I have. What do I need? Taking those things into account because my hope is come January when we do a no spend try and eat off the pantry challenge like eat off everything that we have collected this month can we go a whole month without going to the grocery store I think I can because I'm pretty ingenuitive I guess would be the word for making up meals out of nothing that comes from having been extremely poor at one point in time so I think we can figure it out but what's even better is if we organize now, know what we have, make our list, fill our pantries, then come January, February, March, whatever the time is, whatever the case is, we know what we have, we know what we can make, we have a game plan. So that is what I've been working on today. I do hope that you join me tomorrow. If you're interested in everything we go have going on, like I'm just in here talking as Cody's vacuuming upstairs. Like there's literally so much going on around my house all the time. If you're interested in how we do all the things around this homestead, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notifications. When you give us thumbs up and leave comments, all those things help our channel to grow. I do hope that you are blessed. I pray blessings on you, all those that watch and join us. And um, I really do hope that you're just doing a little something for your future. Tell me what it is that you're doing. Put that in the comment section. If you're new around here, say hello. I'll try and say hello back. Thank you to all the new subscribers and those who have joined us. I look forward to getting to know all of you. So have a wonderful day. I will be back tomorrow.